Mr. Duckworth, let's see that countermarch again the way it's supposed to be performed. This was Wilbur's last parade, his senior year. It was going to be the best, even if it killed us. That afternoon, he was going to march us until we had it right. have always been inseparable. Ludlow Kissel, the neighborhood's rambling, solitary drunk. For 30 years, Kissel had worked at the roundhouse on the extra board. Now, that meant that he was called in only during extreme emergencies. He invariably celebrated a day of work by holding up in the Bluebird Tavern for about a week. My mother and Mrs. Kissel were companions, sisters of the clothespin. Their laundry floated like great sails against the blue skies, and they sailed their ship against the unknown, the battle against dirt. Mrs. Kissel always had a vague air about her, as though she knew that her life had been one long mistake. She never admitted Lud was a drunk. Poor Lud's stomach's been acting up again. He's got nervous stomach, you know. Poor old Kissel, a true honest to John loser. But Mrs. Kissel loved him. So, I hear Ralph's got himself a job down at the mill. Uh-huh. She wanted to avoid the subject. My mother never mentioned work around Mrs. Kissel if she could help it. He's lucky, Ralph. It's only a part-time job. He's just a mail boy. I wish Lud could get on down at the mill. This is Ralph's new shirt up pretty good. The jelly stain's gone. Ralph's got a date tonight. That nice Wanda Hickey? Mm -mm. Emily Schwartz called and asked me if I could get Ralph to take out her niece. Uh -huh. She's visiting from Bloomington. Oh, that's nice. He'll probably go to the Orpheum, and this shirt will probably come back covered in butter from the popcorn. Ralph eats like a pig. How can you stand the sweater in the heat? Claire May likes it. Claire May likes it. Yeah. You're lucky she doesn't like earmuffs. Come on. Oh, come on. You know, your old lady fixed me up good. Hey, I didn't know she was doing it. I didn't know she was doing it. You know, we're going to miss all the action tonight because your fat cousin is ugly and she wears braces. I thought we could take him to the orphan. They got a great picture. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. Yeah, maybe I can get my old man to let me use the Chevy, too. Uh, for years, I had this principle. Absolutely no blind dates. I was a man of perception and taste, and life was short. So what time we gotta go on this great date? But, you know, there's a time in your life when you have to stop taking and begin to give a little. After all, Schwartz was my friend. Thanks a lot, Schwartz. You owe me one. Get ready, Ace. Put those burgers out and brace yourself. John's, what a greasy spoon. <laughs> Why we went there, I can't tell you. We just did. John's is in a mean, scrabbly neighborhood of cleaning shops, pool rooms, dusty places that sold trusses and wheelchairs. John's. What the hell is this? You gotta move those things if somebody comes in here and wants that boot. Come on, John, the place is empty. Poor John, all of his life he dreamed of having this great truck stop where truckers would come in and have his fantastic truck driver's food. But all he got was kids. Hey, Flick, where you been? Oh, no, not him. Oh, oh. You guys been to band practice, suckers. You know, kiddo, I don't know whether I should let you in here after the last time. Flick, skinny, mean, you with the mind of a up. weasel. Yeah, how's that, uh, how's that cheeseburger coming? Yeah, where's my cheeseburger? Give me a cherry coke, huh? How about going over to Wicker Park tonight and watch them shoot off some fireworks, huh? Me and Ralph got a date. Oh, you and Ralph got a date. Well, going steady, eh? Now, my cousin from Bloomington's coming out to visit. 
My old lady wants me and Clara May to take her out. Sucker. Anybody takes out a cousin deserves what they get. No wonder I was bugged. Our little social set, me and Schwartz and Flick, we were known for our sophisticated approach to the female problem. <laughs> this sport was known in our neighborhood as Scraggy. Hey, come on, hey! It's pursued to this day all over America, from Waterville, Maine, to Brownsville, Texas. You think I really want to go out on a dumb date the night before the 4th of July if I didn't have to? Now, what's this broad look like? I haven't seen her since she was about 12. You ain't answered my question. She's kind of fat. Yeah, with braces, right? Yeah. And glasses? No, no. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a great evening. Oh, ugh. Bluebird, where schemes and dreams and neighborhood infidelities all blended together with the smell of stale beer and the swish of Gus's soggy rag. You know, the British have their pubs, the French their bistros. We have the Bluebird, the American Eagle Bar, the Dew Drop In, the Antlers Rest. <laughs> Bless our sainted neighborhood taverns, everyone. Oh boy, that tastes good. Nothing like good old draft beer. You can have them damn cans. Yeah, two tinny. It's gonna be a stinking hot fourth. You can believe me. Fry an egg on the hood of the oils out there. And make the world away. I'm buying women. Gus, you wanna hear a really hot one? You know what the old lady did this time? Would you believe it? She sent all the wash rags in the house in the mail. Would you believe it? What the hell for? It's some kind of a nutty chain letter. You, if she sent it to the name on the top of the list. Would you believe it? I mean, they say men are dumb. So that's where all the wash rags went. Sent all the wash rags in the house in the mail. <laughs> but crying out loud. <laughs> she pretended the wash rags were in the laundry. I haven't gotten any wash rags yet. It's only been two weeks. Oh. <laughs> you should have heard guess who when he found out. I made the mistake of putting my last wash rag in that envelope. Blood had never noticed. Wait till I tell her I know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kissel? Is your wife in on this chain letter thing? Kissel, you got any wash rags? Kissel did not go to the Bluebird for small talk. Ah, my Uncle Carl's fireworks stand. Those shelves were lined with the greatest assortment of bliss and ecstasy this side of the arsenal at Fort Dix. Oh, is that you, Carl? Well, I hope you're keeping some goodies under the counter for me. What's it called? A green atomic devastator? That sounds great! You better save a couple for me. Uncle Carl, a true American entrepreneur. Every 4th of July, he sold fireworks. Every Christmas, he peddled a collection of scrawny Christmas trees. And he was a chain white owl smoker. <laughs> one year, he blew up his entire stand in one blinding red, white, and blue flash. <laughs> After that, he switched to Dutch Masters. I want to do it right this year, Carl. I got a little extra cash because of my bowling prize money. Uh, Roman candles. Let me see your Roman candles. Ah, I'll take them! Oh, listen, I better have some small stuff, too, uh, Carl. Here's some, uh, some team ballers. Uh, come on, ten ballers. <laughs> come on, five ballers. Oh, the pinwheels. Dude, uh, let me have some pinwheels. <laughs> I'm gonna need a couple of dozen of the uh, number one. Uh, number one. Cherry bombs! Ralph loves cherry bombs. Give me a couple of dozen of these. Come on. God, the sousaphone part of El Capitan is as dull as yesterday's dishwater. <laughs> When your 
trying to play a tuba and think of a blind date at the same time, it's tough. Blind dates are like fishing in unknown